Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 188, Sales Team Report by Region. All right, so here's the question we have. A data set over here with various sales reps, how much their sales were by region. And some people have sales in both, both regions. Uh, and then uh, the company has organized those 16 sales reps into these four sales teams. And we're trying to figure out uh, for each sales team how much revenue they had. All right, so my approach to this is, uh, you know, I don't like this format here. I'm going to rearrange that format into uh, some sort of a table, a little hierarchy here that shows for each team who the sales reps are. And then if provided we're in Excel 2013 or Excel 2016 using Windows and not a Mac, uh, then we can make use of the data model. And in order to do this, we have to take each of these tables and format as table, uh, which is Control T. Uh, so there's the first table, which they call Table 8 and the second table, uh, which they will call Table 9. Now, I'm going to rename these. I'm going to take the first one, I'm going to call it Sales Table, and I'm going to take the second one, and I'm going to call it uh, Team Hierarchy, like that. All right, I'll check this out. Starting in Excel 2013, on the Insert tab, we create a pivot table from the first data set, uh, but we say add this data to the data model, which is uh, the, the boringest way to let you know that you actually have the Power Pivot engine sitting behind Excel 2013, even if you're not paying per, for Power Pivot, even if you just have the base level of Excel uh, Office 365 or, or uh, Excel, uh, you have that. All right, so here's our, our new report, and what I'm going to do is I definitely want to report by region, so there's the regions, and I want to see the total sales, but I want to look at this by sales team. Uh, check this out, I'm going to choose all, and that gives me the other tables in this uh, in this group, including Team Hierarchy. And I'll take the team and move it across the columns. Now, the first thing that's going to happen here is we get the wrong answers. That's very, very normal to get the wrong answers. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click Create. If you're in 16, you can auto-detect, but let's uh, pretend that you're in Excel 2013, uh, where we go to our Sales table. There's a field there called Sales Rep and it's related to the hierarchy uh, field called sales rep. Click OK, and we have the correct answers. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Yes, the data model is an awesome way to go with two different tables to build one pivot table. And that's really my preferred method. But if you had to do it with a formula, and you needed to have sales team at the top of each column like this. That means with the formula, we literally have to look through this data set. And for each record, I have to ask, is the sales rep equal to Gigi or Chin or Sandy or Sheila? And then if it's in that cell, I have to say, and is the region North America? Well, we can do that. We can do an and logical test and an OR logical test in the SUM IFS function. SUM range, those are all the numbers. So I'm going to click in the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4, comma, criteria range. I'm going to highlight the entire sales rep column, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4, comma. Now normally, we put a single item like June sales rep into criteria. That tells SUM IFS to spit out one answer for June. But if I highlight four different cells, one for each sales rep, we're instructing sum ifs to do a sum if for each individual sales rep. Now, when I copy this formula down, I need it locked. But I copy it to the side, it needs to move. So I have to hit the F4 key one, two times, lock the row, but not the column. Now, I'm going to close parentheses. This is a function argument array operation. That's the function argument. The fact that we have multiple items means it's an array operation. So when I click at the end and hit F9, some ifs obeyed us. It spit out the total amount for June, Sue, Poppy, and Tyrone. Now, we need to further limit those amounts by adding an AND condition. We really need it to be June and North America, or Sue, and North America, or Poppy, and North America, and so on. Control-Z, we simply extend, comma, 
criteria range two. Now we need to look through the region column. Control Shift Down Arrow F4, comma, and I'm going to click on the single condition. F4, one, two, three times to lock the column, but not the row. If I click at the end and F9, those are the totals for each one of our sales rep in North America. When we copy it down, some ifs will deliver the total for each sales rep for South America. Notice it's just some ifs delivering multiple numbers we need to add, Control Z. So I could put it into the sum function. But the sum function number one argument will not calculate this array operation correctly without using Control Shift Enter. So I'm going to cheat and use sum product. Now, normally, sum product takes multiple arrays and multiplies them, that's the product part, and then adds them. But I'm just going to use array one and just use the sum part of sum product. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Copy it down and over to the side. And since I got lots of crazy cell references, I'm going to come to the last one in F2. And sure enough, it's got all of the cells and ranges correct. All right, I'm going to throw it back to Mr. Excel. What? That's crazy. Mike, point to Mike. Oh my gosh, putting a range of values in some ifs and then sending it into some product to make it treat it like an array. That is wild. We should just stop right there. Uh, point to Mike. All right, let's uh, go back to my method, but pretend that you don't have Excel 2013. You're back in Excel 2010 or worse, Excel for the Mac. I mean, it says it's Excel. I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't, it just drives me crazy what the Mac can or can't do. Uh, so we're going to take my hierarchy table over here. And because VLOOKUP can't look to the left, I'm going to take the sales rep information, Control X, and paste. Yeah, I know I can do index and match. I'm not in the mood to do index and match today. All right, so it's really simple here. Equal VLOOKUP. Take that sales rep name over there, and we will uh, F4, comma, 2, comma, exact match false, like that. Double click to copy that down. Now that we have all this data back in one uh, table, simple little insert pivot table, even if you don't have the checkbox for add this data to the data model. We can build our report uh, with sales team uh, going across, region going down, and sales like that. You can even, uh, here let's reverse these, region across and add the sales rep in uh, like that in case uh, you want to see who the sales reps were. And if by default, if you, you don't want that, uh, we could just collapse the whole group. So from here, I'll go to the Analyze tab and collapse. All right, so there's our sales teams uh, by region. And then if someone wants to say, well, who was sales team two? Uh, we can open that up uh, individually, something like that. Mike, you got another one? Still got to love VLOOKUP. It does so many amazing things. And yes, I agree with you, Mr. Excel. Excel for the Mac, that's not even Excel, is it? All right, um, OK, I have another method, but I'm going to have to jump over to a different workbook. So I just have the same two data sets, and I've converted them to Excel tables and named them. There's the sales table. There's the team table. And I like your Power Pivot option so much, I'm going to steal that, but do it a slightly different way. Because as you say, if you have Excel 2013 or later, you have the Power Pivot data model there. But it gets even better. On the Data Ribbon tab, if you have, and I have Excel 2016, if you have the Relationships button, you can just build the relationship as if it was a VLOOKUP between these two tables, and it will automatically send it to the data model. So here's the Manage Relationships. I'm going to click New. I'm going to select Sales Table, Sales Rep. This, in essence, is our lookup value, right? And then I'm going to select the lookup table, DE Team, and the Sales Rep. This is the lookup table, so it can look up Sales Rep and return the Sales Team. But there's no VLOOKUP column. It simply is two tables in our pivot table field list. Yeah, look at that, the relationships. When I click OK, it's sending it to the data model. Now I'm going to click in a cell off to the side, Alt-NV to open up 
Create Pivot Table dialog box, and look at that. It already assumes I want the data model because there's stuff in the data model. Now I click OK, and I have my two tables right there. I'm going to click the drop down, Sales Team to Row, Sales Rep down below rows, and then Sales from the Sales table down to Values. Row labels, I don't like that. So I'm going to go up to Show in Tabular, right click Number Formatting, something like Currency, click OK. Now, just as Mr. Excel said, we can collapse this if we do not want to see the sales rep, and then drag region down to columns. And just like that, we have all of our sales teams totals for each region. I can even open this up. Whether you access the data model either through the checkbox in the Create Pivot Tables dialog box or simply Data Relationships, that is the way to go. So fast and easy, and we can pull fields from two different tables. All right, I'm going to throw it back to Mr. Excel. Whoa, Mike, the relationship out here on the Data tab. I'm sure I've never noticed that. And I guess in my defense, in the smaller version of Excel here, it doesn't have a word on it. It just looks like a tiny little icon. And I realize it was new. That is super, super cool. All right, let's just do uh, one more here. I'm going to use Power Query. So on the Data tab, Get and Transform Data from a table. I select the first table. And I'm going to take this region field, and I'm going to pivot it. So I'm going to create a pivot table right here in Power Query. Uh, I have to be careful here. The values are in the sales area. Click OK. So now for each sales rep, we have their sales to North America and South America. And I'm going to call this uh, by rep, by rep. I'll call it by rep. And then home, close and load. But I'm not going to close and load to the workbook. I'm going to say only create a connection like that. All right. Then I'll come to the second one and say that I'm going to create a query from a table. All right. And this is just going to stay exactly the way it is. I will call this Teams and close and load, close and load to only create a connection like that. All right, so now we have two different reports here. And I'm going to say that I want to create a combined query, a merge query. And my first query is going to be called by rep. And then I'm going to look up into the Teams query. Now, this part is the part that is not intuitive at all. Click on Sales Rep here. Click on Sales Rep here. And we want all from the first, matching from the second. Click OK. All right, so now here's all of our Sales Rep information, what they sold in North America, what they sold in South America, and use the Expand icon here. And all we want to get is the team information. I just want to call it team. I don't want to call it teams.team. .team. That would be crazy. All right. At this point, we no longer need the sales rep information. I'll remove that column. I'll take the team and move it over to the left. Oh, and then check this out. Group by. We're going to group by the team. And the new, the new column name is going to be called North America. The operation is going to be the sum, the North America column. And then we'll add a second one called South America. We'll sum the South America column. There we go. Group by team, two columns. And we have our information here. Let's order this. So on the Home tab, we want to sort A to Z. Sales team 1, 2, 3, 4. There's our North America. There's our South America. Now finally, we'll close and load. And we have our results. And and check this out. Uh, it's even cooler than that. So if I go back to Build Power Query, and we take Poppy, and we move Poppy to Sales Team 2, and then come back to our results set here. All right, so Sales Team 2, we should see these numbers increase. Uh, come here and click the Refresh icon. And those numbers changed, right? How cool, how cool is that? All right, so wrap up. The goal today, we're going to build a sales report by region and team. 
Uh, the original data has sales rep in a region, and then there's a lookup table, in my opinion, badly shaped, uh, that organizes sales reps into teams. So my method reshaped that data into uh, team hierarchy data, make both ranges into control T tables, create a pivot table, adding the data to the data model, and then create a relationship. Mike's method, use some ifs with a criteria to field is an array, didn't know you could do that, and then the sum product function. Uh, my third method, rearrange the hierarchy table so sales reps on the left, and then do a VLOOKUP, building a pivot table. Um, Mike's method, use the relationship icon to build a relationship first, and then a pivot table from the workbook data model. Uh, and then the fifth uh, version, the no VLOOKUP, no pivot table version, in case you're afraid of both of those. Uh, Power Query, add the lookup table as a connection only, add the original table as a lookup only, doing uh, the pivot right there to get North America and South America, merge those two tables, group by, and then um, group yeah, group by uh, within Power Query, and you can refresh. All right, well, hey, I want to thank you for stopping by for this very long Dueling Excel podcast. We'll see you next time for another episode from Mr. Excel, and Excel is fun.